All right. Well, we are live. Good morning. Good, good, good afternoon. Good evening, whatever it is. <laughs> Long day, guys. Um, well, welcome to our foundation matching class. If you don't know me, my name is Lisa Davis. I'm a professional makeup artist, licensed esthetician, a regional vice president with Arbonne and an independent consultant with Arbonne. Um, a little bit about my story. I was with a cosmetic company for um, 12 years. Many of you who are on that call were with me in that company. And um, it taught me a lot about what you're gonna learn tonight, which was makeup. And I actually became a makeup artist through selling cosmetics. And so even if you are on today and you have no experience, you, um, you, know, you came into Arbonne for the nutrition, maybe for the skincare, my goal for you tonight is to be able to start to grow in this area, to learn how to match people both in person and virtually, and also to grow in your um, confidence and makeup skills. And so this is just one of many of the classes that we're offering. We just did a highlighting and contouring class that was open to customers. We have another one that's open to customers in about a week, and it's gonna be a smoky eye class tonight. It's just for consultants. And so um, I hope that you enjoy it. And then at the end, once we're done recording, you can ask your questions. But I hope that this really brings some clarity for you. Um, that's, that's a little bit about me and my background. Um, you know, when I um, was with this other company, I learned a lot, they closed. For those of you who don't know much about my story, they closed about three and a half years ago. It was very, de it was devastating for many of us. And most people within that company, which you can watch the story in a different time, went with other companies. Um, they just chose a company and went with it. It was sort of like this grab and grab as many people as you can type of situation. And um, not many people really took the time to research different companies and look at the pros and the cons and the back office and the branding and the marketing and the compensation plan and the products and um, the product philosophy. And I did just that. I spent two years, I joined 12 different companies and I loved a lot of what many of them had to offer, but as a professional makeup artist, makeup was a huge one for me. For, um, for me, nutrition was just kind of icing on the cake. And there were lots of things that I was looking for, but one of the biggest things that I needed was of course a clean product line. And I narrowed it down to three product lines that had this clean philosophy that we have in Arbonne. But what I finally realized is that we've had this philosophy for a lot longer than a lot of these other companies that clean and pure and safe is not new. This has been around and this was the philosophy of Arbonne since the beginning. And so that was a light bulb moment for me. Um, there were other things that of course attracted me to the company, the marketing and the compensation plan and all of that, but that's not why we're here tonight. The other thing that was really important to me was the foundation, the primer and the CC creams. Um, I needed to have something that was very full coverage. And you know, a lot of the lines that I really loved, I really loved their skincare and I didn't like their makeup, or some of their makeup was good and some of their makeup wasn't that great. Um, some of them didn't have a liquid foundation at all. Many of them had a cream-based foundation that was kind of waxy. The feel was completely different. Um, and they were cute lines, don't get me wrong, but none of them really had a traditional full coverage foundation that I could offer to clients, which is huge because guys, um, foundation is the number one sold makeup item in the United States, followed by mascara. And the average American woman spends over $1,000 a year on makeup. So it's really important that we learn how to match people for foundation because if you can match somebody properly for foundation, they're gonna come back to you over and over and over again because the average woman runs out of it every two to three months. So this is a consumable like um, powerhouse, right? With foundation. So this is really important because you know, mascara, you don't need to match anybody. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So there are some resources that are available through Arbonne in our back office that I wanted to point out before I even jump into the content of tonight. And that is our complexion shade matching guide. So if you ever want to know how the different products correlate over like the different, um, the different shades, this kind of helps with that. This does not help you to match people for foundation. We're gonna get into that. But this does say, okay, if somebody's found their foundation, what concealer should they use? What CC cream should you use? What powder lines up with? What corresponds with the foundation? All right, so this kind of gives you a little guide about, of that, and that's available on your back office. Another one that's available is um, just a correlation between 
the mineral and I'm sorry, I can't see properly. It looks like the mineral and the foundation. So if they use a certain kind of foundation, then this would be the color for them. And as you can see on this graphic, it's saying try ivory bisque, try bisque nude. It means they're mixing things together, which we're also going to talk about tonight, which is mixing products to get the perfect match for your customer. So this is available again on your back office. But let's just jump right in. And tonight, um, the first thing that I really want you to wrap your mind around is undertone. If you can figure out just by looking at somebody, their undertone, then you have eliminated most of the foundation shades that are not their match. So it helps you to narrow it down. So if you pick out, okay, I know this person tans easy and they're a yellow, then that takes, takes about 10 other foundations off the board. You only have about five to pick from. So let's talk about undertone. Foundation brands all come in basically three main undertones. For those of you who used to be in my old company, we actually made it a little bit easier with the P, the Y, and the N, because you knew exactly what undertone it was based on the, the, the first letter of the foundation. But I'm gonna teach you with um, how that correlates to Arbonne and how you can actually read the name on labels and tell whether it's a warmer or cool in just a minute. But let's look at pink, yellow, and neutral. Um, pink, now this is gonna be probably your least amount of people, honestly. I would say maybe 20 to 30% are going to be pink undertoned. What does that mean? And I'm gonna have you guys pop in the chat tonight and tell me, to, I want you to diagnose yourself as we go through these. So if you have a pink undertone, typically you are pink or peachy just looking at you, all right? Usually you burn easy in the sun. You're one of those people, if you don't have sunscreen on, you're, you're toast. You know, you're red, you turn red immediately. Maybe you flush easily if you get nervous, if you drink wine, if um, you get hot, you go, you turn red. So if that's you, I want you to comment in the chat tonight that that's you. You can kind of self-diagnose. And if that is you, if you are a pink, then you have to wear um, foundations that line up with that. So you want to wear a pink base or a cool, what we call cool based foundation. And we're going to go into what that looks like in just a little bit. And I'm also going to show you some examples for each one of these so that you can better diagnose who you're looking at and be able to um, match people even virtually. All right, the next one is yellow. So if you have a golden or olive undertone, you tan really easily, meaning you go out in the sun and guys, like you are like a shade darker within five minutes, all right? Um, or two shades darker. Um, I want you to pop in the chat and tell us who you are. And that is me. You know, you can tell I have a lot of color right now. I hold on to color longer. If that's you, you hold on to a tan really easily. If people ask you like, oh my gosh, what do you do? You're always so bronze. You're like, I'm just naturally dark. Um, you have a lot of melanin in your skin, then you are a yellow. And I can't see the chat yet, so I can't wait to see later <laughs> how many of you are yellows. All right. Now that means that those of us who are yellow are always gonna wear a warm undertone foundation. And we're gonna talk about what that looks like in just a minute. Now, most of us are an even mix of pink and yellow, and we call those people neutrals, all right? So they might burn initially, but it might turn to tan. It's just a slower process. You have an even mix there. You are gonna wear neutral colors. Most people fall in the neutral category. So you'll see later on in the training that I say, you know, if you aren't sure what somebody is, usually they're neutral. You know, <laughs> if they're not yellow and they're not pink, they're neutral. That's an easy one. That's an easy hack for foundation. Because pink people, you can usually tell just by looking at them. Yellow people, you can tell by just looking at them. And some neutral people are the people who are like, mm, I don't know. Okay, so they're neutral, all right? So let's look at specifically what each of those looks like. Just a sec, undertone. So warm undertones, um, and I wish I had my color wheel in front of me, I don't, but basically it's anything that has a yellow base. Cool undertones have a blue base. And neutral undertones have an even mix between a yellow and a blue. So they're what we call neutral. It's just like people who have brown eyes, like myself, right? 
I have a neutral eye color, which means that with eyeshadows, I can do whatever I want. I can have a lot of fun. Whereas those of you with blue eyes, you have to do something a little bit different, which that's a whole nother training, right? But um, so hopefully this kind of helps to understand what we're talking about. So if you tan easily, you're gonna wear warm undertone foundation. So those of you who we just talked about and you are our yellows, you're gonna wear yellow foundation. Now you may not look at these foundations and be able to tell, you've never even looked at them in this way. You've been like, oh, they just look like different shades. I didn't even know that they were, you know, had an undertone, but they do. Okay, cool undertones. Those, are you, those of you who tan or don't tan, you burn right away, that's you, you're a cool. And then those of you who are in between, you can get a tan, but it takes a long time. You may be burned initially. You're a neutral. All right. Okay. So let's talk about the language of undertones. If I say warm or yellow, it means the same thing. If I say pink and cool, it means the same thing. Neutral is an even mix of pink and yellow. And some brands have an extra like category that they put in and that's olive or green, and that means they are super, super olive. I could almost go with a super, super olive, all right? But we're not gonna cover that as much tonight because most brands, including Arbonne, have three categories. Now, Arbonne also has a makeup guide in the back office. So I screenshotted this so that you could see how they categorize our foundations based on cool, neutral, and warm. Now, can you see by commenting in the chat, how if you know what the undertone is of someone is, it minimizes your choices. So if you know that they are a pink and they're gonna be in the cool category, that takes off the entire two bottom lines. All you have to choose from is the top five. Does that make sense to everyone? So you have less choices, okay? Same thing with the warm. If you know somebody tans easily and they're gonna fall in the warm category, that narrows your choices down to five. And then all we have to do next is figure out what shade that person is. All right. Keep chatting. I know I can't see chat, but that's okay. We're going to answer all the questions later. Now, I will say before we move on, I have always operated with Arbonne Foundation. I've been with the company for two years in a little bit different manner. When I saw this list, I was like, Ugh, I think that golden, let's see, golden, where is it? Golden beige is a neutral, golden bronze. Okay, so they've got golden bronze listed as a cool. I use it on warm tones because golden bronze to me is very yellow. So my recommendations tonight may not specifically line up with what they've got listed here, but it's gonna be super, super close because they've got most of it on here the way I do it. Um, but hopefully it'll make sense as we go through. Okay. So let's talk about our pink folks, the ones that have the pink peachy undertone that burn easily. They're the smallest percentage of the people that we're gonna be dealing with. I've placed some examples here on your screen so that you can see what I'm talking about. People that um, are a red undertone, they either have the reds in their skin or they can sometimes have a lot of freckles in their face, which gives you the appearance of, like you'll look at them and go, oh, they look tanner than they really are because their skin's quite ruddy. So if you look at like say Amanda down in the top left or the bottom left, see how ruddy her skin is? She's very freckled. She is indeed a cool undertone. It's just that she's more tan and she looks more tan because she's got more freckles, okay? A lot of times people who have a pink undertone also are, um, uh, have more eczema, skin irritation issues. They can have more allergies because generally their skin is more sensitive, which is another whole topic that we could get into in the Fitzgerald um, scale of skin and how much melanin you have. But then, but, but they can come to you with a lot of skin issues. So you can see in the top right hand corner, I had a client, this is a bridesmaid who um, just had a terrible breakout before we did her makeup. And that can be pretty typical of people with um, the ruddy red, pink and cool undertones because their skin's really sensitive, all right? Um, the other thing you wanna look for is usually people with a pink undertone have blonde hair, um, red hair, Cher um, auburn hair, um, strawberry blondes, you know, they're very light featured. You're really, it's going to be rare to have a pink that is too, too dark until you get into your African-American dark skin tones, which that's a whole nother 
down deeper in the slide, so we'll get there in just a minute. But so these are your light featured girls. And I think that, that hopefully seeing all of these gals can help you to wrap your mind around what a pink looks like. Pinks are very easy to point out, um, to pick out from a crowd. Um, again, because they're pretty rare. They usually have light eyes, typically, um, and sensitive skin. So let's move along and we're gonna talk about our yellows. There are olive, easily tan, and again, easy to pick out because they're pretty dark and they hold a tan really easily. So I'm gonna show you some pictures of some yellows. Um, most of your darker skin tone clients will be a yellow base, typically, until you get into the very dark skin tones, like very dark black skin, and that usually is more of a pink undertone, which we'll get to. But again, this is self-explanatory. You can see that these gals have that yellow base coming forward. Our neutrals, the ones who burn initially, it turns to tan. They're an even mix of a pink and a yellow. And here's some examples of our neutrals, all right? And you can tell by looking at all of them that they're really neither pink nor yellow. I mean, now maybe Amanda down on the left bottom with the blue eyes, I may have put her with the yellow, but I always say when in doubt, go with neutral or yellow. All right, because it won't mess anything up. If you put something in a pink, it's probably gonna mess up their look. Um, but these usually a, um, a neutral can have dark hair, they can have light hair, they typically don't have a whole lot of freckling in their face. Um, they typically don't have a tan. You have to give them the tan with their foundation colors. They have to get spray tans to, help, to hold a tan, right? And, and feel free to comment and, and ask your questions as we go through. So here's how I would categorize our bonds foundations based on undertone. Our pink and cool foundations are listed as alabaster, soft blush, rosy beige, deep beige, toffee, and espresso. I say this later, I'm gonna um, cover this again, but I think it's worth repeating. Your mid-tone colors will always be your most popular. So soft blush and rosy, rosy beige are the two that I use the most out of the pink undertones, okay? From the neutral family, we have fair honey beige, which is a true neutral. Buff is a warmer neutral. Neutral beige, which is on back order right now, we'll talk about that in a minute. And earthy beige, which is more of an olive tone. All of those are neutrals. So they're gonna be most of the people that you uh, put makeup on are either gonna be a honey beige or a buff. So we're gonna talk about how to build your kit in a little bit and how to actually you know, start to have everything on hand. And those would be the colors I would recommend. Yellow, we're talking porcelain, golden beige, golden bronze, deep bronze, and espresso. Okay. Um, one thing I want you to get used to as well is that the name of products usually indicates undertone. And this was a real eye opener to me back when I learned this concept years ago. And it helped me to teach my clients better because this is something that I go over with my clients when I do a makeup lesson on them look for the names of products. So if they're shopping, this helps them to guide them a little bit better. The things that are indicative of warm or yellow undertones are typically names like golden, sun-kissed, and bronze, right? Because they in indicate to us warmth. Anything that has sun in it, if it says like, like for instance, our Starlight Glow Palette, it's, you know, it's indicative of glowy, warm, bronzy tones. Anything that says beige, blush, soft, there was one other that I thought, thought of earlier that I didn't put down here, but it, it's indicative of a pink or cool undertone. Anything that says neutral or buff is always gonna be neutral. So remember that though, because it doesn't matter if it's Arbonne or another brand, it kind of crosses all makeup brands that if you're looking at a beige, you're looking at something that's more cool. And this will help because sometimes, you know, for instance, you're shopping for lipsticks or whatever, which we're about to get to in a second, and you can look at the different names and really be able to tell what the undertones are be gonna be. It's very hard to shop when you can't sample things. And so maybe holding the two together, um, a beige and like a neutral, and you can definitely tell the difference in the undertone. But the same does apply to lip colors, blush, and eyeshadows. So I wanted to give you just an example, just again, so that we can just solidify the difference between warms and cool colors and neutral colors. So here we've got Gladiola lipstick and Dehyla lipstick, both reds, totally different undertones. 
can you pop in the chat really quickly and tell me which lipstick is warm and which lipstick is cool? Okay, same thing with our volume one and our volume two. I actually don't call them volume one and volume two. I call them our warm and cool palettes. Which palette is cool? And which palette is warm? Test time. Okay, so obviously Gladiola is the warm tone lipstick and Tahila is the cool. And then the volume, see I get them so mixed up. The one with the darker colors and blacks and the purples is the cool. And then the other one that's more neutrals is the warm palette. About the cherry blossom, that would be a cool palette because it's the deep purples and plums, all right? So hopefully this again helps you to wrap your mind around it. The same thing with blushes. I usually pull out blushes and show my clients, okay, can you pick out the warm and can you pick out the cool? And hopefully by the time they're done with a the lesson, they can pick out the warm versus the cool. There's another way that you can figure out your undertone. So I want everybody to take a look at your wrist and tell us in the chat what color your veins show through your skin. I am, I know, you never really thought about this before, right? <laughs> I am a warm and my veins show through as quite like greenish blue. People who have a cool undertone, their veins can show through more on the blue side. And then of course you've got the neutrals there. So if you're not sure, you can do this as well. But most of the time, hopefully, since the, after these first few slides, you've got a feel for looking at people and being able to tell, okay, that person's warm, this person's cool, this person's neutral. All right. Can't wait to see what you guys have said later. All right. So we have got the hard part out of the way. Because again, once you figured out undertone, now the matching becomes way easier because now our job is just to figure out the shade. We figured out whether they're yellow, pink, neutral. Now we have to pick between four or five colors to make sure that we can match them. So here's a little trick, everybody pay attention to this part. So we, we decide somebody's a cool, or let's just say warm because I use warm more. So they're warm. We know that porcelain's out because very small percentage of the population is gonna be porcelain. And then we know that, let's just say um, toffee, um, or express those out because most of people are not going to be that dark either. Okay, that's a smaller part of the population. So that just leaves us with three shades to choose from within the warm family. So you see how we've just narrowed a lot of your options down. So now you only need to try three shades and you're going to try them on the jawline. If, if the face, the neck, and the body are indeed the same color. You will match from the face down to the jaw. This doesn't happen very often. Most people either have a lighter face than their body or a darker face than their body, or this is what happens more often than in our area because I'm in Florida. They have a light face because they put SPF 50 here, all right? And then the rest of their body's tan and their neck is white. That's what we get most of the time. So what you're going to have to do is really take the full body into um, account when you are matching people's foundation. So I ask a lot of questions, which we're going to get to in a second, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. When you're matching somebody in person and you figured out their undertone, again, it's a mid-tone, a lighter one, and a darker one. Come down, and again, this is if they are the same shade, face, neck, and body, which does happen sometimes, okay? Then you can give them one shade because that, you know, again, that doesn't happen very often. Sometimes you have to mix two shades, okay? So let's just say you put three shades on and one's just a little bit too light and one's a little bit too dark, but the undertone looks okay. And it looks like if you put it on, it would blend all right. What I would typically do is take the darker one and the lighter one and mix the two half and half, and then you've got a perfect shade. And I'm gonna show you how to mix in just a second. That's a whole nother slide. But again, 
The best way to match in person if they are all one shade is along the jawline all the way down to neck, but that only applies if they are all one color. All right, so what if they're not all one color, which is most of the time, um, because special situation, they spray tanned. I got a spray tan today. I could already tell that it's developing and that this, to this evening I probably should have gone with a darker color on my face. Again, Florida situation, the face is lighter, the neck is lighter, the body is dark. So we have to do our job in connecting the chest up the neck and to the face. But remember that always the neck is the lightest part of everybody's body because the sun hits here, the sun hits here, it never gets here. So you really always kind of have to make sure and bring down the foundation to connect it to the chest so that you don't have a line of demarcation here. And sometimes I just come slightly under because a lot of times I'll have a little color here. So I just go right here and right here. But this is true of pretty much everybody. The lightest part of the body is always the neck. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself because I keep finding myself wanting to say more, but I need to just keep, we're gonna keep moving on. So how do you match people virtually? You definitely wanna ask for a picture in natural light. And um, you wanna ask for a picture that includes their chest and their arms as much as possible. Because again, if I look at somebody just their face, I can't tell how dark their body is. So if somebody saw just my face, it's like basically three shades lighter than my body. It would never match, right? Um, so ask for more um, of their body. Natural light is always best. And that's something I didn't put in this training, but I definitely want, it's worth mentioning. I'm in front of a ring light right now. If you are hoping to move in this direction, which I would encourage everybody to do because makeup is huge. It's a big market share and it's a big reordered item. Go on Amazon and get yourself an $80 ring light, okay? I have a $400 ring light sitting in front of me. It is no better than my $80 ring lights on Amazon. In fact, the $80, um, $80 ones are easier to travel with. I don't get all freaked out about breaking them. Um, it helps you to put your makeup on better. Your selfies will look better. Your zooms will be better. You'll be able to match your clients better. So um, lighting is really, really important. In fact, the other day I was um, scrolling Facebook and I saw that another company put a before and after up. And I see these all the time where they're talking about, oh my gosh, this liquid fat burner that I am drinking has made my face look completely different. And because, um, you know, and it's like one picture's taken inside with can lighting, shadows under every eye, everything looks terrible, of course, because it's terrible lighting. And then the next picture, the after picture is always take, taken in, you know, natural sunlight, so they look amazing. Guys, the lighting can make you look 10 to 15 years younger. Um, so you always have to take pictures of makeup or if they're sending you a picture of themselves so they want to be matched it has to be taken in natural light or in front of a ring light so that you can as, as close to mimicking natural light as possible so if you are hoping to move into the you know the makeup arena lighting is everything you've got to have the proper lighting so make that investment for sure so the questions i'll always ask can do you tan easily does this person have freckling in their face um, is their face and body the same color? And then I'll ask questions like based on their picture. So do you usually match your face or do you match your body? Because I noticed that your body's a lot darker than your face. And I say that all the time, even in person. Hey, I noticed your body's larger, you know, darker than your face. And we have other Arbonne girls that have, you know, I've said something to them like, hey, you really need to go to a darker color. And they're like, oh my gosh, you're right. You know, because they're matching their face with buff and their body is a natural beige or um, even a deep beige, you know, and then once they bring that color up, it's just kind of game changer. Every little thing with makeup is a game changer. So ask that question. Because some people are like, no, I just want my face to look the same exact color as it is. They don't care if it looks two shades lighter. They just want it to look like that. Um, if you can, though, encourage them to go to a darker shade just because on camera, it really shows up. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that where somebody's got a white face, tan body, and it just doesn't work on camera because the camera picks up everything. Um, and then I do send samples. Um, if, if they're virtual, I have little tiny jars. I'll put a few squeezes of, of a couple different colors 
and send it to them. If they're in person, of course, I've got every color and I can match them easily. But if they're not, if they're virtual, at least you can narrow it down to two or three and you can send them a little something to try. Um, but I always, always pretty much sell two colors to everybody. And we'll get into that in just a second. So how to mix. So this is a big one because like I said, most people vary in shades. They're not the same color all year round. Some people spray tan, some people tan easily. Um, like during this season, COVID, we were all on the boat more than ever, you know, so we were all really tan. Um, also, somebody might be in between shades. So they're just not, you can't find their perfect match. They're not a golden beige and they're not a golden bronze. They're kind of in between. They might have to mix because honestly, 16 shades or whatever we have isn't going to be enough to match everybody perfectly all the time. So I always sell two shades, um, at least 50% of the time. Um, you might want to mix formulas and that's something you want to talk to people about a lot. Like I had a lady the other day who natural beige is her color. Well, it's on back order right now. And so I encouraged her to mix her medium CC cream with her buff, you know, full coverage foundation. And that made a great color for her. Same thing for us. We can mix our CC creams on the back of our hand, or you can do it on a palette. So I put a picture of a stainless steel palette. If you are looking to move into the more professional um, realm, um, you'll want to definitely get mixing palettes. You can get them on Amazon and you just mix the colors within the palette and then pick it up with the brush. And then ratios are variable. Now, what does that mean? That means sometimes I might use golden bronze. Sometimes I might use golden beige. Sometimes I might mix them half and half. Sometimes I might put one little tiny squirt of golden bronze into golden beige because I'm just a tad bit darker. And so you wanna help people have the confidence to mix based on where they are in the spectrum, especially if they tan easily, they might not always be half and half, same for you. And so you can teach your clients to do the same thing. Mix on the back of your hand, put it on your face. If you're doing this in a professional setting, mix on the palette and then try it. And you can keep playing around with it. Don't ever feel embarrassed to just wipe something off and restart. You know, if, if you mix and then it doesn't work, wipe it. I had a lady today that I had to do that on and I was like, nope, that did not work. <laughs> because I have, and I'm still, I mean, I've been doing makeup since my kids were little and I still sometimes don't really diagnose somebody correctly or I look at them and I'm like, oh, they're warm. And they're not, you know, it happens, it happens. And so um, don't feel like you can't go, oh, that I'm embarrassed, like um, I, I wanna keep going because I don't wanna show them that I've made a mistake. I just like, eh, I don't like it, wipe it off. Just wipe it off. Or if you're not sure, sometimes um, like at a party, because I do a lot of makeup classes in a party setting, I look at somebody, I'm like, ah, she's this or this. So I'll hand her two different shades and I'll say, put a little bit on this side and put a little bit on this side and let me look at both sides. And they'll turn like this and turn like that. And I'll go, okay, I, you, I like that one better. All right. So don't feel like you can't play with it and make mistakes, let people try different things and wipe things off. It's okay. And then also, you know, with selling two colors, don't feel bad about that. Don't feel like you're trying to upsell people. You're not. It doesn't matter if I worked at the Mac counter or Urban Decay or at Les De Lauder, I would probably always be selling at least two colors, if not two formulas. And so when I'm doing a makeup lesson, many times I say, okay, I understand that you want something simple. So we're going to get you a CC cream, but I think you should buy a full coverage too. And I, I just tell them that because there are certain, certain situations where you're going to need a full coverage that you don't want as much SPF in your foundation, right? Because of flashback and cameras and stuff like that. So this is your opportunity to educate people on that, that variation in shade. If you get a little color, you're going to need a different, a darker color, but those are all the situations when you would need to do that. So some other helpful hints, again, when in doubt, go with neutral or yellow. Okay. If you're just at a loss and you're like, I don't know, just do neutral and try it. If it doesn't work, go with yellow. Um, again, the most popular shades are your mediums. So if I were building a kit from scratch, or you're just like, I wanna have some colors to start with to be able to match people, then get buff, soft blush, rosy beige, honey beige, beige, honey, rosy beige and golden beige. All right, those are gonna be the colors that you're gonna use the most. Um, one thing I didn't mention on this previous is to balance undertones. So if I have somebody and I'm like, mm, they're a little bit pink, but a little bit neutral. You know, I will mix a little neutral into a pink or I'll mix a little 
you know, balance out a yellow and a pink by, to make a neutral. You can mix the two. So play around with it and see what colors you can come up with. Or um, like the darker skin tones, let's just say they're almost a golden bronze, but they're a little bit darker. Um, I like to carry a darker color. So when you're building your kit, maybe buy one darker color. And I, did I put, yes, I did. Um, build, it says on the third point, buy one darker color. So maybe buy the espresso or buy the toffee or the deep beige. That way, if, if, the, if, the, if it really does match, but you need it just to be a tinge darker, you can just pump one little dollop, just one small dot of a darker color, mix it in, it completely changes the shade. The same thing works for airbrush makeup. When I do airbrush makeup, sometimes I'll just drop a little bit of bronzer in my well, and it completely changes the look of the makeup, because with makeup, you can change color really easily, just like that. But build your kit slowly, adding one color per order till you have all of the colors, which I would highly encourage you to do so that you can um, use this to sample on people. Um, for getting started, and I didn't really mention this a whole lot, but when you're getting started, maybe ask people and say, hey, I'm just getting started with the makeup. I'm trying to practice matching people for foundation. Would you let me come match you? And I'll do it for free. I'll just pop by. That's how I got started was uh, doing it for free. And then eventually I started charging where I'd say, hey, you know, I'm offering this, you know, special where I, I do make, I'll do your makeup for $25. And if you'll let me take a before and after picture. And the before and after pictures may just be for you right now. Okay. So they're for you to look at. Um, but the reason I did that is because pictures tell a story. You can see every imperfection. You can see everything you did wrong. You can see if you put the wrong undertone on. You can see if you got the shade wrong. You can see if the eyeliner's messed up at all. Like when I post a before and after picture, I'm so critical of them because I really look closely and I probably see things that other people would never see. And so I think it's important because you can, you can basically look at your work and go, okay, I can improve this, I can improve that, how could I fix this or that? So this is a great way to get started. Just practice, practice, practice. Hey, can I do your makeup? You might suck at it. Guys, when I first started doing makeup, I would sweat down my back. I was so nervous to do people's makeup at parties. And this is years, I mean, I sold cosmetics for 12 years before, so I've been doing this for 16 years. I still remember trying to match somebody for a foundation at my very first party. I was so, nervous but you just kind of have to go there and believe me you will get better and better and better and better one thing that we are allowed to do in the state of florida is we are allowed to trade makeup application for purchase so it depends on your state's laws but here we can say i'll do your makeup for sixty dollars um, and they get sixty dollars in arbonne foundation or makeup in exchange the same thing applies at the MAC counters. They can put makeup on people legally at the counters without being licensed because it, it's a hundred, you buy a hundred dollars a MAC and you get a complimentary makeover that comes along with it. Does that make sense to everybody? So check the laws in your state um, and see what they are. But in our state, if you are repping for a, um, an MLM or a counter, you do not have to be licensed to do makeup. You only have to be licensed to do makeup if you are exchanging the service for money, in that, and what which you are not doing. You are exchanging the service for a product purchase. Okay, so um, it's a great opportunity to get started and learn, or maybe just say, "Hey, I'll come do your makeup for twenty dollars, and you buy." Or you know, what would be really cool is for forty-four dollars or something like that. You just buy the foundation. If I, you know, or maybe you say. Um, I, I'll do your, I'll match you for foundation. And if you like it, you can get it at my cost or something like that, just to kind of up your sales too, because you know that every little bit helps. Because if you give it to them at cost the first time, you've got the practice out of it. And then you've got to reorder client. Say, hey, just this one time thing, I'm just going to give it to you at cost for letting me come match you. And then they're going to reorder after that because you've hooked them on a foundation. All right. Um, okay. So, sorry, I went off on a little rant there. Let's talk about our darker skin tones. Um, we usually are either a yellow or a pink undertone, but most of the time your darker skin tones are a yellow or a warm undertone. And you can see that here with my clients. Of course, Heidi's up in the top right, very yellow. You can tell that she probably tans really easily. Of course, um, darker skin tones don't try to tan, but they do get darker if they go out in the sun. Um, bottom right, I cannot remember her name, but she looked so beautiful, yellow, all right? 
In the middle, this is one of my bridesmaids recently, and she used Espresso Foundation, which um, Arbonne has listed as a pink or a yellow. Um, I find that it's a little bit of a mix of pink and yellow, but um, that color is our darkest shade and can be mixed with lighter shades to lighten it up just a little bit, depending on how dark or light your client is. And then the top, the bottom left is a mother of the bride. And um, she, I think, was wearing deep bronze, all right? So um, you can kind of get a feel for what that color looks like, which that, again, yellow. So most of your darker skin tones will be yellow. I would never use a neutral. Like if you used earthy beige on a darker skin tone, it's going to look ashy and terrible. <laughs> and that's the last thing they want to look is gray. Then they know they're like, this is not right. But um, I would encourage you to grow in this area. When I went to cosmetology school, um, it was funny because every client that came through, they'd go, Miss Lisa, they're yours. Because I, I mean, every single one of my classmates was a darker skin tone um, gal and I ended up practicing on them constantly and it helped me to grow into darker skin tones and what I found was that most of them wear yellow undertone makeup and then most of the concealers which now of course I have uh, you know 25 different concealer shades they're all an orangey orangey peachy base whereas ours are much, much lighter. So that, just, just go there, kind of practice, and um, you will get more confident in this area. But you do have to do a lot of mixing with darker skin tones to find the perfect match. Um, and if you need help, you know, always, you can always reach out to me. Many of you send me pictures all the time. Even people who are not on our team send me pictures and say, who, what color should this person wear? And I, I can tell you pretty much, pretty easily if the picture's really good and clear. So a little update, we do have a new Facebook group that is private for just our Arbonne um, makeup purchasers. We of course have a 30 days to healthy living group and our smoothie group, but we have a brand new group that's just starting to grow that I'm starting to post in. I'm managing that group right now. And I know that all of you are posting in the other groups, which is great because I want to build this one. This is for people who purchase makeup specifically so that they can continue to be connected to the specials and this is on our you know for our team so that like if there's something going on that's makeup related or we're doing a tutorial or we're teaching a smoky eye class they have access to all of that in the group and the link is on our page so anybody's welcome to join if you want to follow along um, but we're hoping to help educate our customers because remember our whole job is to give give get give value and makeup technique and tips is something that people want to learn and so if we can help them they'll continue to give you the sale because you will be top of mind so definitely try to grow in this area even if it's just experimenting on yourself and wearing a different lip color and taking a selfie and putting it on your stories or you know um showing people how you highlight and contour like which i did tonight i did a reel on my stories which was me with no makeup then me with foundation and then me highlighted and then contoured and then full face like just real quick flashes people love that stuff in fact somebody told me tonight that she gets mesmerized by watching makeup which i am too it's kind of calming it's relaxing it's art so you can grow in this area i promise you you can um it's it's crazy to see when i look back five years ago at my work i'm like <laughs> you know how far you know i've come and how far you can come so with that, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am going to stop the share and stop the recording and I'm gonna allow you to just ask me questions that you